Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment, mother T. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely T TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So, this Diddy situation is getting crazier and crazier. I'm going to keep on bringing y'all the tea as far as that's concerned. So we left off yesterday just kind of breaking down a lot of old videos that were coming back to mind, things that were going viral again. And we found another video somebody posted on Discord with Diddy talking to Ellen DeGeneres about how he stays up until 6 o'clock in the morning every morning. This is insane. Check this out. What time I, do you stay up till? I stay up till like maybe 6, or, six in the morning. I'm back up at like 10, 30, 11. Six in the morning. What do you do every night till six in the morning? You don't go to clubs every night. No, I mean, I, I mean, I make love a lot. And, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I told you when I came on the show, I was going to be completely honest and expose myself to the world. Um, this man gives me nothing but vampiric energy. Um, at the end of the day, there's not that much sex in the world. I mean, the fact that a man as old as he is is able to stay up every day till 6 a.m. Diddy definitely has some serious drug issues, okay? So now on top of that, we also talked about the necklace situation that was going around. Everybody was trying to figure out, you know, what does this necklace mean? Why did Diddy give it to all of his girlfriends? Now, somebody sent me this short clip. I don't know whose video this is. If you could send me the full video, that'd be great. But they sent me this short snippet of a man breaking it down, and he's saying that this is the devil's horn necklace. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out this video really quick as well. The chain, did y'all see this claw here? This is called the horn of Canute, though. They call it a lion's tooth or a saber tooth, whatever you want to call it. But this is actually called the horn of Canuto. Now, the story goes is that um, when Lucifer fell, right, from the sky, one of his horns broke off or something like that, right? And one of these, this, this horn or tooth that they want to call it, that's what they want to call it, a tooth, but it's actually the horn of Canute, though, right? It's the devil's horn. And Diddy was given all of the women he dealt with this horn, right? This horn to wear around their neck. Now, I'm going to show you this because this is very important now this is j lo's video she take the horn off her neck she got the horn on and throws the horn all right so you guys just heard what he had to say he called it the horn of canuto i tried to do some research um there's not a whole lot but they're saying that it is some type of devil horn um you know everything with this industry just proves to be extremely dark you know, everything that we see, all of the pictures, it's not as innocent as they initially try to proclaim. You know, I remember seeing that picture of Aaliyah in the bed with Andre Harrell and Jennifer Lopez back in the day. I thought it was weird. I'm like, why are all these people in just a big bed together? But you know, as a kid, you're just like, oh, they're celebrities and this is what they do. They're just having fun. Now, it to me, it just looks like a big old pass around, threesome S type picture. You know what I'm saying? So while all of this stuff is floating around, you have people who are literally running for the hills. And I think they're running for the hills because their tea is about to be exposed. First, let's start with Kevin Lyles. Kevin Lyles, a.k.a. the bootleg Russell Simmons. I don't care what y'all say. Him and Russell Simmons look like they're one and the same, okay? So the other day we found out that Kevin Lyles literally ran. He decided to just, you know, dip on out of 300. He decided to step down and retire as the chairman and CEO of 300 Entertainment. So a lot of people are talking about this. A lot of people are very shocked. His net worth is $60 million. And, you know, 300 is his baby. And it's very interesting that he has decided to step down as CEO. Now, what's also interesting is that if you guys don't know, a lot of CEOs, from the Nike CEO and other CEOs tied to the music business, they have been stepping down back to back to back like all week. It's been a list of CEOs that have stepped down. So people just find it very strange, especially being that Kevin Lyles is very close with Diddy. You know, he went to a lot of Diddy parties. Um, so 
after a decade, he's saying that he wants to pass the torch. So this is what he wrote on Twitter. He says, after a decade, it's time to pass the torch. On September 30th, I will be departing from 3EE and WMG and our incredibly talented homegrown leaders, Raina Bass and Salima Bua, as well as the outstanding Greg Nadil, have my blessings for the future, okay? Then he goes on to, you know, write a bunch of stuff to his team and how they spurred a decade of influence with songs like Trap Queens and Drip Too Hard and Lifestyle and Hot Girl Summer and all this stuff. But interestingly enough, he's still leaving, okay? So a lot of people are saying that he's actually leaving and getting the fuck up out of Dodge, okay? Because of the whole Diddy situation. that he He's packing his stuff up and we'll probably see him in Bali in a few weeks. So that's the tea on the internet streets. Now another person who's very close to the Diddler, he's also running for the hills, okay? One of Diddy's PR gurus, okay? She abruptly quit. And this is the day after it came out that people were calling her the Ghislaine Maxwell of the Diddy company, that she is Diddy's fixer. They're saying that people went to contact her, you know, and email her, um, and everything was disconnected. She disconnected her um, number, she disabled her email, and she done got the fuck up out of Dodge, okay? So this is what's being reported. So this is what Radar Online is saying. They're saying Natalie Moore, the woman behind Sean Diddy Combs' image, has suddenly resigned following his arrest in a federal sex trafficking case. Moore, 55, served as the rapper's head of communications for over 20 years. However, by Wednesday morning, her phone was disconnected and her email was inactive. Just months after she praised Diddy's work is truly humbling. Natalie is gone, sources claim. <laughs> she is 100% gone. She quit today. She had no other choice. She had to quit. What else is she gonna do? Move, bitch. The situation left her no other options. The source went on to say Diddy has her entire world. She will surely be deposed of for this if she has not been already. She most likely had her cell phone confiscated. Who knows what else is in there? So the shit is hitting the fan. Let's not forget, I went onto her Twitter page and um, she had retweeted Diddy. Diddy sent this tweet out back in 2020 when he says, one of my missions for the year is truly being the light and use my light to shine on others. These are just three of the talented beast executives that work for Combs Enterprises and will be leading us to our championship this year. Hashtag Queens, hashtag Aaron, at Nat Moore, at Christian K. Corham. Thank you all for what you do. Let's go. So this is Diddy's dream team right here. And that name, Christian Corham, I had talked about her on my live stream the other day. A lot of people are also saying that, that she too is involved in the fuck shit and that she has also done a lot of just slaying Maxwell type stuff for Diddy as well. So both of these women are getting the side eye from the internet. And I want you guys to go ahead and watch this quick video as well. Sean P. Diddy Combs was just denied bail again and will remain in a Brooklyn jail until his trial. But that's not all. We have some more breaking news on this case. Who helped P. Diddy pull off these freak-offs? This right here is Christina Coram. She joined Bad Boy Entertainment in 2013 and very quickly became known as Diddy's right hand. Little Rod, one of the producers who accused Diddy of sexual impropriety, says that this is Diddy's Ghislaine Maxwell. Diddy has written about her in songs and went so far as to say she's the person who keeps his life running. He doesn't know how he would function without her. And now other people who knew her said that she was instrumental in organizing those freak-offs and that she facilitated the abuse of the women who were forced to participate in these events. There are allegations that she forced everyone in Bad Boy Entertainment who was anywhere near Sean Combs to carry small amounts of narcotics on them so that no matter which way he looked or who he asked, they would have what he wanted on them. She has not been arrested or accused of any crimes so far, though in the indictment against Sean Combs, they do list several high-profile associates. So it's unclear if she'll be indicted on any of these crimes or if they're going to try to use her as a witness. But either way, being called somebody's Ghislaine Maxwell is a loaded accusation. I'll let you know when we have more. All right, so y'all just watched that video. So it looks like Christina Quorum. People are definitely giving her the side eye. News reports are being written on her. And also Natalie Moore, who abruptly quit. So the chickens are definitely coming home to roost. 
Just like in the R. Kelly case, everybody's jumping ship. Everybody's trying to protect themselves. You got these CEOs stepping down. You have, you know, his dream team jumping ship and stepping down. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with these two ladies. Now, in other news, we also got to talk about this. Kamora Lee Simmons is out here being hella cryptic, okay? So if you guys do not know, out of nowhere, nobody, nobody at all, here comes Kamora Lee Simmons. She decided to take the social media yesterday and just randomly tag her ex-husband, Russell Simmons. So a lot of people are saying, you know, is she tagging him to be messy? Is she letting us know that Russell's going to be next? So let me go ahead and show you guys this right here. So as you guys see on her Instagram stories, she said at Uncle Rush. So a lot of people are giving this situation the side eye and taking this as a dog whistle that at Uncle Rush card may be next, okay? So now what else is going down is this. 50 Cent decided to speak to Earn Your Leisure. They were doing a vest fest. And 50 Cent was talking about kind of what I had stated the other day about the whole Diageo situation and how Diddy got a bit too big for his damn britches, okay? So we're going to go ahead and listen to what 50 Cent had to say about the situation. Check this out. You have the experience with major corporations like me, my particular experience with Beam Centauri. It was great in the beginning. It's great for us to work for them. It is not so cool when you start to own things. You see what I'm saying? So I made a lot of money with them too. Like there's a point they, they did a deal that mirrored what Puffy's deal with Diageo was for Syrah. So he didn't have ownership of that at any point, but he was getting a lot of money, like almost like $60 million a year at one point. So you see him go to daily on is when you see him have some issues. And these people have really strong relationships. Don't think that the civil case doesn't turn into a criminal case faster because He's making that them uncomfortable. That's a big part of it. The spirits business is it's not governed. They got a discus board that they created, right? If you got two companies that are three billion dollars a year, and Beam Centauria and Diageo, the the distribution level is very hard for to get things to a point where you can do the numbers, the right numbers. They incentivize the sales force by giving them box bonuses, and then when you sell a product, you get the bonuses off the boxes that's there. But you make that. No matter what product you're selling. So if, if you sell Hennessy or Remy out the gate, they start to put downward pressure on the new companies. All right. So you guys just saw what 50 Cent had to say. And 50 Cent was making a lot of sense. Again, this is what I was telling you guys when I did that breakdown a few months ago. When I was telling you, Diageo is a billion dollar company. Okay. Right now, this company is worth $73.51 billion as of September 20th, 2024. And so when you have somebody sitting here who's worth literally a fraction of that, hollering about racism and, you know, trying to strong arm them to give him more money, to give him more shares, to make him like a George Clooney, Diddy was getting way too big for his britches. I definitely believe a lot of this stuff is tied to Diageo. When you have companies that are worth billions of dollars like that, that is the difference between a billionaire and a millionaire. A billionaire can literally shift how the world changes with how much money they have and they earn. So when they see this person creating ruckus, it does make sense that they'll be like, you know what? We have so much dirt on Diddy. Clean him. Get him the fuck up out of here. He's starting to think that he too is white. He's starting to think that he too is in these spaces. No, you're a guest in our home. The same way people like to holler about Eminem being a guest in hip hop, Diddy, 50 Cent, and a lot of these guys are guests in these white corporations' homes. They're using them to be glorified influencers, right? And Diddy got way too big for his britches. You're not fucking up our Johnny Walker brand by sitting here screaming that, you know, we're racist. You're not fucking up Casamigos by screaming that we're racist. We will handle you and get you out of our hair the best way that we can. And I believe, you know, that two things can be right at once. That Diddy is a sexual demonic deviant, right? But that also he ruffled the wrong feathers. And they weren't having it anymore. You know, because again, Diddy only wants to speak about racism and being woke and, you know, black disparity when it comes to him and his pockets. He doesn't care about the regular black folks because if he did, he wouldn't have been the only one from bad boy eating. 
If he cared about other black people, other black artists, he had been looking out and cleaning up his own house and making sure his own artists were good. So the only time you really hear him talk about racism is when it affects him. But damn the stuff that he's done to other black people. That's supposed to be okay. We're supposed to overlook that. So again, this is the chickens coming home to roost. I don't think that 50 Cent was telling any lies. I don't think he was even gloating about Diddy's downfall. He's keeping it real. He's educating people. This is how this works. A lot of these celebrities do not own these distribution companies. They don't technically own their brand. The Kardashians, how many clothing lines have they had? They're not the ones sewing and distributing this stuff. They're literally private labeling and, and just slapping their brand on there. No different than what's going on in the liquor company. Like, okay, well, you're popular. We'll give you, you know, your own little liquor name. You pick it out. But we're doing all the distribution, we're doing all the distilling, we're doing all the selling. So yes, we're going to own 50% of the profits, if not more. And see, Diddy wasn't liking that because they were giving more share and profits to George Clooney. Because Casamigos just really took off and he started feeling away. Again, narcissism and ego will get you every time. He was so bothered by what George Clooney had going on, he didn't even realize the blessed position that he was in. 50 Cent just said this man was making about $60 million a year. Many of us will never see that type of money. And instead of him being satisfied with that, he wanted what George Clooney was getting. And now he's sitting in a cold cell on suicide watch, waiting for a cold ass plate of food. And that's the way the cookie crumbles, okay? So now in other news, Ray J is also going viral once again for speaking on Diddy. He recently did an interview with uh, Chris Cuomo on his show. And he's basically saying, um, you know, Chris Cuomo's asking him, like, how come his celebrity friends are not coming out and speaking on his behalf? And Ray J saying that he's shocked. He had no idea about all of this stuff going on. So we're going to go ahead and watch this interview with Ray J really quick. Not spoken out since Diddy's arrest joins us now. I appreciate you taking the opportunity. What's up, Chris? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. And I'm happy to meet you. Thank you. Um, what do you want people to know about what, how these allegations hit you? Had you ever thought you would hear this about the man? I didn't. Um, and I think it's just, it's a, it's a different time in this game. And, you know, when you look at our mentors and the people that have kind of shape this culture it's important to acknowledge the mistakes that they've made but and we have to hold everybody accountable for what they've done but i don't think this is a time to tear anybody down right instead it's a time for this industry and everybody that's going through this and seeing this to learn from the mistakes and create a roadmap for the future of the industry together right um in, in unity I think that's the next plan um, that I think needs to be put in play. And with all the allegations and everything that's been going on, um, it, it is definitely shaking this industry up. So the importance of unity right now, I think, is, is the key to a, a positive future. Why do you think we haven't heard from anyone until now? You know, I, I just feel like a lot of people are in shock. A lot of people are dealing with it um, in their own way. Um, but in times like these, I mean, we should come together. We should talk about it as a community. It's easy to divide and point fingers, but unity is where you build. You can have a stronger future for the culture. I mean, Diddy's been an icon for decades. We've all listened to his music. We've all been around him, that, at least in my era, and have, have looked up to him. Um, and in this situation, it's super unfortunate, but it's important to learn a lesson, right, right now, and ensure the next generation understands how to move differently with transparency and in integrity. And, and I think transparency and integrity moving forward should be non-negotiable. I hear you, and look, we, we need that in every culture. Um, you hear yeah. and may know what I hear, which is, uh, People aren't coming out because they either suspected this about him or they don't want to have any connection to him. And then I guess there's another group who's worried they're going to get pulled in, which is one of the suggestions uh, from prosecutors. When you were with him, you had to have heard the kinds of things that other people heard about uh, what Diddy could be about on the dark side uh, and 
excesses of his. What did you make of what you heard and what did you ever see for yourself that gave you an opinion about what he was about? Well, um, for myself and I think a lot of other people in this industry, I mean, it's all a shock because, you know, we've never seen uh, the stuff that's being said and the stuff that people are finding out. Like, I've never been in rooms that people are talking about and I never knew they existed. And a lot of people in the industry can can agree with me on that sense. Like, you all wanted to go and have a good time at a Diddy party, you know, and you wanted to be inspired, you wanted to go out and have a good time, and then you wanted to go the next day to work, and you wanted to work hard in this good vibe, you know, and so to see where we are now, um, I just think everybody is still trying to digest it and still trying to understand it. Um, and even though, you know, there's still allegations and it's not anything that's just allegations. factual yet, but mm -hmm. it is, it's hurtful and it's, um, and it's confusing to a lot of people. I mean, we all grew up, um, you know, listening to Puff and, and, and Bad Boy, mm -hmm. and they represented success and resilience, but it comes with responsibility. And when people fall, um, right now, we just need to use it as a moment to reflect, not to criticize, but find a better way to move forward as leaders, individuals um, in, in this culture that we're in right now. All right, so you guys just saw that interview. Now, I will say this. Ray J looks very dapper. He looks like a lawyer, looks like he's running for political office. But with that being said, Ray J, your name has been around the industry a lot, too. Let's keep it real. Ray J's asking for unity and, you know, people are shocked. They're trying to digest the Diddy news. No, what it is is a lot of y'all are trying to get y'all stories together. Um, yeah, a lot of y'all are sweating bullets, nervous that the feds may knock on y'all's door. Um, a lot of you guys have kept up sexual deviancy in the industry, especially in hip-hop and entertainment, for decades. And now the chickens are coming home to roost. And that's why now everybody wants to stay quiet and, you know, fall back and, you know, send prayers and well wishes. You know, hopefully he wasn't participating in any freak offs, but, you know, who, who's to say? You know, who knows? At this point, we're trying to figure out what the hell really happened to Whitney Houston, sir. Y'all ain't talking about that either. So the whole situation is crazy, but it just shows you that this whole thing with Diddy, it has the industry shooketh right now. Shooketh. We still have not heard anything, <laughs> okay, from Jay-Z. Jay-Z is still hiding out. He went to that sports betting ceremony, and we ain't seen him since. So I think a lot of people are very nervous, and rightfully so, because a lot of people have taken advantage of people in this industry and have done them wrong. And the chickens, like I said, are coming home to roost, and it has people sweating bullets. So now, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. How do y'all feel about this? How do y'all feel about what 50 Cent had to say? Do you feel like Kamora Lee Simmons is sending out a cryptic message, low-key, you know, saying that Russell's next? How do y'all feel about Ray J's interview? Um, how do y'all feel about this damn necklace that everybody's talking about? And then last but not least, how do y'all feel about Kevin Lyles and uh, Christina and Natalie and all these folks, you know, stepping down from their high positions? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video. Feel free to share the video. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friend and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.